Okay guys, so today we're going to be going over how we can take our Linksys WVC80N wireless N network camera and configure it so that it will work as a time-lapse camera um, that will function without having to have a computer on all the time or to save it to a hard drive or things like that. This is going to use a free website service um, that will automatically save the pictures for you. It will be uploaded from the camera to this website via FTP. So we'll go over how to set that up. It's real easy to do. There's no ports or anything you have to mess with. Um, it's just all setting it up on your camera and then setting it up on the website. So typically the Linksys camera is not meant to function as a uh, time-lapse camera, um, but we're able to manipulate a couple settings um, so that we can have it do that um, and still maintain the video functionality so we can actually still watch video that's live from the camera as well as have a time-lapse uh, footage available if we would like it. So the first thing you need to do is get into your Linksys um, wireless end cameras uh, settings and we want to go and make sure we have the most current firmware. So we're going to click on administration and we will scroll down here and we'll check the firmware. So it'll say it's version 1.0.01 .01, and it's the build double zero. That's the most current firmware version. We want to have that firmware. It's the least buggy of the two. Um, so make sure you update this firmware. You can download that from Linksys's website. Um, download that, upgrade it, and then um, go ahead and continue with this video. Um, and you will have no problems with this firmware. It's great so far. So the next thing we're going to do is once we have your camera upgraded, we're going to go to our new website, which is called sensor.net. So sensr.net. This is a free website that's used to log um, different web cameras. People use them to watch their pets. They use it to watch work, stuff like that. Um, it's completely free for one camera. It will store images for three days um, and you can play those back as a time lapse. If you want to store images longer than three days, then you have to go and um, you can actually pay for a different plan um, and it lets you you know, save it for up to a week, up to a month, or however long you want it to. Um, you can also use their time lapse. They have a um, couple different options. So if you do have a website and you're looking to put a time lapse camera image on your website, particularly the Google sites, there is an app um, that will allow you to automatically post the most recent picture that's taken on your webcam um, that's sent to the sensor.net website. It'll automatically post that on your Google sites website for you. Um, without having to take any of your bandwidth or having any of your settings on your home computer get messed up. It's just, it's this is a really easy way to do this. So first thing you want to do is you want to register for a new account with sensor.net. You want to register for the free one. Um, the free one is fine for what you need in this situation. It's real easy to upgrade if you need to. Um, but I can't add another camera because I already have one camera on here and you only can have one camera for a free account. So essentially when you're going to set up your camera, you will get to a um, screen page somewhat like this where it will have you name the camera and over here on the right this is what's important it'll give you the FTP server it's going to give you the username and your password and this is what you're going to have to write down or remember it or keep this window open because we're going to have to enter this into the Linksys cameras um, settings so now that we have this ready to go here you can edit this talk about um, if you want to have it you know, named if you want to share it you can go in here into privacy and I have my camera listed as public. You can switch it to private. Um, we'll go into motion detection here, but we're not going to do that here yet. So um, first thing we want to do is we just want to get this information copied down. So once we have this, we're going to go back into our Netgear, or I'm sorry, our Linksys camera. And we're going to go down here to motion detection. Okay, so we're going to do a FTP server motion detection um, settings. So you want to manipulate or copy your settings as best as you can to what I have here minus this stuff here. Don't don't worry about any of this down here. This isn't important. That's for you only. Um, mine is unique to me. So um, you can manipulate and change your frame rates, your pre-capture length, your post-capture length, um, but you really don't want to have this manipulated at all. Just keep these settings the same. So we want to set this to JPEG image one frame per second. We don't want any pre-capture length. We want one post-capture length for one second. And I like to do it every minute. Um, you can set it to whatever you want to do. This is just the delay um, of how many, if you have a motion de that's detected, how long after that motion was detected will it be able to detect a new motion. So I just have it set for a minute. 
So essentially what it's going to do is every single minute it's going to take a picture because we're going to fool the camera into thinking that there's always motion going on. So um, once you have these numbers right, uh, we'll go down here and you want to select, you want this to be FTP. And then here's our server stuff. So we want to go back over to that sensor.net. We want to copy this FTP server, username, and password. We want to copy all that into here. So FTP server, the login name is your username. Password is the password that they provide you. And you want to have passive mode enabled. And port 21 should be default. But um, go ahead and we'll leave that there. Um, once you get all that stuff, go ahead and click apply. Um, and then your camera might reboot. It all depends. I'm not going to apply because I already have mine set. Um, so now we have the actual motion detection stuff set up. And you should automatically receive, if you go back over here to your sensor.net website, it should automatically start receiving pictures momentarily once you have clicked apply if you have motion that's being detected. Now we're going to go and we're going to fool the camera into thinking there is always motion. So the way we do that is we're going to go, you can download the user manual of your Linksys camera from Linksys's website and we're going to actually use some of the CGI commands to do this. So the first thing that you want to get uh, highlighted here is we want to get our motion settings um, as far as what the camera has. So you're going to come scroll down to page 36, you can get this manual from Linksys's website. Um, this is the actual link right here that you want to find which is get motion detection settings. So we're going to go back over here to our Linksys camera and we're going to paste it in here and then in your IP address up in the front here you want to type in the IP address of your camera so the external IP address so you probably have a um, a DYN DNS forwarding type deal going on that's good you probably want that if not you don't need it um, you can always just type in the IP address of your camera if you are behind the router on your network personally so I'm gonna do mine is more this one here so I'll click that and I'm gonna click enter and so it's gonna bring up this window here and so this is just talking about um, if you look in your manual it will tell you but essentially uh, this is talking about how we only have one area that is being detected for motion that's all we want um, you really don't want to mess with any of these settings the only one we want to mess with is the sensitivity so my sensitivity is set at 10 which is the highest that it can go so the camera is always thinking there is movement even when there is no movement on the camera which is what we want for a time-lapse photography so what you want to do is yours probably says maybe 9 or 6 or 2 or something like that you want to click on MD sensitivity 1 as long as, so you have to go up here and you want to check, so MD switch 1 should equal 1, that means it's on, and we only want MD switch 1 to be on, that's the only one. Then we go down here to MD sensitivity equals 1, or MD sensitivity 1 equals 9 or 6 or whatever number it is, and you want to copy this number here. Okay, so we'll copy that, we'll open up a new tab, we're going to just paste that in there. Um, so then we're going to go back to the manual. And now we want to go from get motion detection settings that's here, we want to go down to set motion detection settings. So we're going to copy this URL here. Okay. Go back into our browser and in that new tab we open, we're going to go and we're going to paste directly in front of that MD sensitivity that we set here earlier. So what you want to do now again is type in your address that's up here. Uh, and then we want to go all the way to the right here and it says group equals motion and and then the parameter equals value. So the parameter, we're just going to delete all that. The parameter equals MD sensitivity 1 and then we're going to type in equals 10. Okay? And then you're going to click enter. And then we'll get an OK response here. That means that the camera has accepted that command. And now your sensitivity is 10. So then if you go back here under the get motion to find out what your settings are and you click refresh you'll be able to see your MD sensitivity 1 should have changed to 10. Um, now we want to change the threshold of MD sensitivity so the threshold means the sensitivity is how sensitive it's going to be the threshold is how much of a signal do we need to have in order to trigger a alert an alert so we want to set that at zero so that anytime we have any sensitivity or any movement detected it's going to send an alarm which that alarm is sending the picture to your sensor website. So we're going to do the same thing here. So you want to copy the MD threshold one, 
you can go over here and you want to paste this in so that after the and, so you want to just delete your MD sensitivity 1 and you're going to paste the MD threshold 1 and you want to set that equal to 0. So then you're going to click OK and you'll have another window pop up that says that the command was accepted by saying OK. So now your camera is ready to go. Your camera should automatically be sending pictures now of whatever it's pointed at every one minute to your sensor website. Okay, You can go to your sensor website and check and you should be receiving images. Um, you can check on your motion detection settings. We just want to leave this off. Uh, we want to leave this regions of interest off. That's all, you know, whatever you want to do with it. I don't use it. Um, you can also send it to have alerts and send text to your phone numbers, but you don't want to do that. Plus, I'm on the free plan, so you have to pay. Um, but then, so we can go in here and it'll start taking a picture every minute. So I can go up here to one of my feeds. So this is from our lake house. And I can click play, and it'll show a picture. The camera has taken a picture every second, or every minute, excuse me, and it'll play that entire hour of video. So the camera has sent a picture every minute to this website, and this website will save those images up to three days' worth for you to play back. You can also share them um, and send them to Facebook, stuff like that. So here's one. Um, let's see here. A time lapse of stuff that we've done that you can go back and you can save. So this is when we put our dock in here at the beginning of the year. This is just a little time lapse. So it does work. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, shoot me a comment or a message, and uh, we will see if we can figure it out. Uh, be sure to like if you thought this video helped you. Thanks.